Hello and welcome back. Thanks for joining. My name is Berit and today it's time for another reading wrap up of the last two months. I haven't been posting for a while because I was traveling for a few weeks, but now I'm back. So I guess we are back here. So uh, let's get started. We have six books on the list. And the first one that I read in September was If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha. If I Had Your Face tells the story of four young women who live in Seoul and about their struggles and their lives. And the book is a lot about uh, Korean beauty standards. So the first of these four women that we get to know is Kyuri. She works as a room salon girl that's kind of entertainer-like. It almost gave me geisha vibes, just, you know, modern geisha vibes. Anyway, Curie is very, very beautiful, um, but we also get to know that she has had quite a few operations to get this beautiful, and we also kind of get to know a bit about what's behind um, that beauty standard that she's actually fulfilling. Her roommate is Miho, who is an artist. She was in the USA with a scholarship and is now back in Seoul working at the university. And um, yeah, she seems to be very naive at first, but throughout the story, you kind of get more insight into her, which is very interesting because she's not as naive as Curie seems to think that she is. Then we also have Ara. Ara uh, lives across the hall from Curie and Miho. She is mute and um, works as a hairstylist. And um, she is obsessed with a K-pop idol, um, which is kind of funny, but also it turns out it's not that funny actually. But um, yeah, that is Ara. Ara also has a roommate who is not one of the four narrators that we have in the story, um, but her roommate wants to be like Curie and wants to become a room salon girl and undergo a heavy surgery to become beautiful. And the fourth uh, protagonist kind of that we have is Wana. She also lives in the same building as the other three, just on a different um, floor. Together with her husband and Wana tries desperately to uh, get pregnant. And throughout the story, we kind of find out why that is. So yeah, as you probably gathered, the story basically follows those four women, or well, five. Four of them are narrators, but the uh, roommate of Ara is not a narrator, although she does, um, she's part of the story for a lot. As I also said, the book treats uh, Korean beauty standards and the fact that a lot of people undergo surgery to um, become more beautiful in the eyes of Korean society. And I have to say that uh, the story was pretty bleak. It was a lot bleaker than I expected, but as for most of the books that I read, I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it was very bleak and kind of pessimistic. Um, all women, unsurprisingly, have their baggage, which we get to know more about throughout the story. And it's very interesting. Everyone has kind of their own story. Also, by the way, all men who feature in this story are assholes, which was not very, not very hopeful to read. <laughs> But uh, yeah, anyway, I think of all the characters, I liked Miho the most because I thought she was the most interesting one with the most interesting backstory and also the most interesting character development throughout the story. Although all of them are interesting, but I just thought um, Miho was kind of the, the most interesting one for me. But yeah, I liked the book. It was a fun read. Well, not too fun actually because it was pretty bleak but um, it was a good read and um, yeah after that I read Pyongyang by Guy de Lille this is a graphic memoir by a Canadian cartoonist and animator Guy de Lille about two months that he spent in North Korea while working for a company who outsourced part of their work to North Korea and he was supposed to supervise the North Korean animators and help them and work with them. And it's about 
his time there, what he experienced, the problems that he had and some funny situations that he had. Well, funny because of the cultural differences and stuff. I don't really have to say much about the book. It was interesting to read. Um, it didn't sweep me off my feet, but it was, it was interesting. Um, I felt that it partly was a bit mean towards the North Korean people that uh, the protagonist meets. Um, a lot of the kind of funny situations that we see at the office are kind of um, jokes on the North Koreans in a way, which I, I kind of get, but I also felt it was kind of kind of offensive because I also thought, well, they're also just doing their jobs and trying to live there, so... Hmm. But yeah, it was interesting to read and also I will say that the artwork in some of the panels was very, very beautiful because um, here and there uh, the book has full page pictures of some of the um, sites in Pyongyang and those pictures were very, very beautiful. So yeah. The third book that I read was The Dark Forest by Sixin Liu. This is part two of the Remembrance of the Earth's Past series. Part one was the three-body problem. I did make an individual video about The Dark Forest, but I will also briefly discuss it here. So if you care for spoilers for the three-body problem, uh, skip to this point because, yeah, the whole book is a spoiler for The Three-Body Problem and I don't want to spoil anything. So in this book the Trisolaran fleet is on its way to Earth and humanity has about 400 or 450 years to figure out what to do before they come and destroy the planet. And what humanity does is that um, the United Nations installed the Wallfacer project which, um, in which four people are selected to come up with a plan and the catch is that they, they get a lot of powers but they cannot openly talk about their plan because the thing is that the Trisolarans, they can monitor everything on Earth. Um, they basically observe us all the time. But the one thing that they cannot observe is our thoughts. So the idea is that the Wallfacers come up with plans to save humanity without anybody knowing what the plan exactly is so that the Trisolarans also cannot destroy the plan. And the uh, terrorists from the Earth Trisolaran organization they of course get to know about the plan because that is discussed publicly so they assign each wall facer a wall breaker whose job it is to scrutinize everything the wall facer does and then spell out their plan in order to uh, nullify it basically um by the way the whole wall facer project and wall breaker thing it always reminded me of Outlast because there you have the Wall Rider project or the Project Wall Rider. And I needed to remind myself all the time that this is not Outlast. This is not a horror game. This is actually a science fiction book. But yeah, anyway, our protagonist is Luo Ji. He is the only one of the four wall facers who is not uh, a publicly known figure and uh, nobody's really sure why he has been selected as a wall facer including himself he's not sure about this either but uh, he's basically our protagonist and we follow along with all the wall facers for the most part of what plans they have and what happens to them and what is interesting about the book is that it also jumps ahead quite a bit in time and uh, those parts, the more you get into the future, the more interesting and science fiction-y it becomes. Um, although I have to say I found the second book generally a lot more science fiction-y than the first one. Um, and as for the first book, the second one has a lot of interesting concepts and it's very, very exciting to read. But also, like the first one, it has a lot of misogyny in it, actually much more than the first one. But uh, yeah, so be aware of that. But anyway, I, I still really like The Dark Forest, but I gotta say, I think I like the first book a bit better. 
Um, but yeah, it was a cool read. Uh, it was very fun and I'm looking forward to part three, which I will hopefully read anytime soon. Moving on, the next book that I have read was Your Cold Hands by Han Kang. As far as I've gathered, this book has not been translated into English. I read it in German. Um, and in German it came out in 2018, I think, but the original was actually already published in 2002. In this novel we have a frame story about an author called H, um, who meets a sculptor with the name Yang Un Yong. And um, they meet, they have a very short conversation and then sometime later H is contacted by uh, the sculptor's sister um, who tells H that the sculptor has disappeared and nobody knows where he is. And the sister sends H his uh, records or notes, almost kind of like a diary to read, which H then does. And then we have a very large um, inner story in the novel, which is the most, the biggest part of the novel, uh, which consists of uh, Yang Un Yong's uh, notes and records about his life and his work. Yang Un Yong has a hard time understanding people and understanding people's emotions. And this is kind of a red thread throughout the whole novel. Um, in his notes, he writes about meeting L, who is a young, heavily overweight uh, woman, but he is fascinated with her and especially her hands. And um, he gets her to agree to let him make plaster casts of her hands in different positions. So he makes kind of sculptures from her, very delicate sculptures, because um, this plaster cast stuff is not the most durable uh, substance to make sculptures from. Um, L and the sculptor, they also um, enter into an affair uh, of sorts, but it seems like they don't really get to know each other for real in that process. Um, L is also a kind of, yeah, figure who's hard to grasp, I think. She has also an eating disorder, so trigger warning for that one. Um, and after a while or eventually the uh, affair goes to pieces and Yang Eun Yong also has an affair with a different woman who fits the Korean beauty standards perfectly. Um, but she is also kind of a strange character and Yang Eun Yong doesn't really understand her in the end or well the readers don't really understand her until the end. I thought she was very very strange, but so was Yang Eun Yong and so was basically every figure we meet in, or every character we meet in the whole novel. I enjoyed this book for the most part, um, but I also feel like I have a very hard time describing what Han Kang's novels are about. And I also feel like I have a hard time finding words or figuring out what my thoughts and feelings about these novels are, um, which is kind of one of the things that I like about her writing uh, and about her books, because it stays with me for a long time. And I'm sorry if that was the worst book wrap up review that you've ever heard, but <laughs> I feel that it's very difficult to um, talk about that. But I will come back to that aspect in just a minute because the next book that I read was also by Han Kang and it was Human Acts. Human Acts is a novel that takes place during and after the Guangzhou massacre in 1980 in May. Um, what happened was that uh, student protests against the new military uh, government were brutally knocked down, um, causing a lot of deaths. Um, depending on what source you look up, it's up to 2000 deaths in like 10 days. Um, and I guess it also led to a collective trauma in South Korea because it was a brutal um, fight against the democracy movement there. So in this uh, situation, we have multiple narrators, um, but everything is centered around a boy, Dong Ho, who uh, 
who during the massacre or, or during the days of the massacre goes looking for the body of his friend who he supposes has been killed. As I said, parts of the story take place during the massacre. During those days, parts of the story take place years and years after the massacre and describe how the people affected by it still suffer under the consequences of it or under the aftermath of this massacre. The novel also has a strong autobiographical aspect which is explored in the epilogue, which I'm not sure if that's a spoiler now. Um, but anyway, uh, here Han Kang kind of speaks as the author and tells the story that um, well, she is from Guangzhou, so, and her family relocated to Seoul relatively shortly before the massacre, I think, like a year or something before that, I think. And the thing is that her family sold their house to the family of Dong Ho, who is kind of the protagonist of this book. So I thought that was a very interesting um, and kind of touching um, aspect. Of the novel. I thought the book was very interesting. Um, it's also very interesting narratively speaking because we have this boy Dong Ho who is kind of the red thread uh, that connects a lot of the stories that we read about and he's also the narrative you in the story which I found quite unusual. At least I rarely read books that have a you that address readers slash a character directly. But also here coming back to what I was talking about earlier, um, I have a hard time putting my thoughts and feelings <laughs> about the book into words because I feel that all of the books by Han Kang that I've read, I have read three of the I think four that are translated, the only one that I haven't read is the white book, but all three books that I've read they're both beautiful and cruel and her narrative style is very sober but and clean but it's also very beautiful and, and this combination of the books being both kind of beautiful but also cruel and this narrative style that is clean and sober but also beautiful and that creates interesting um, mental pictures that are both beautiful and cruel again um, I don't know that that kind of hits me right in the guts and there isn't necessarily too much plot going on in these books at least not in the three that i've read human acts i would almost say has the most plot in it um but nonetheless all the three books were very thrilling to read in a in a very strange way you kind of wanted to know what's happening next although not much was happening but you kind of wanted to read on i think out of the three books that i read i think i like the vegetarian the most so yeah that was my little ted talk about han kang Woo. and that leads me to the last book that i have read this month um which was this one metro 2033 by dimitri Rukowski. I'm probably mispronouncing that name. So yeah, I ended the month in the tunnels of the Moscow Metro. Metro has gotten huge since it came out um, as this chunky novel because it has been adapted into video games and it has a huge fan base. Um, and there, there are even other metro books that take place in other metro systems. I have seen that there's at least also metro in St. Petersburg, I think. And St. Petersburg, by the way, has the deepest metro system of the whole world. So the background of this book is that some 30, no, some 20 years ago, more or less, um, there was a big nuclear war which has destroyed the earth. We basically have a nuclear winter and uh, life on the surface is not possible anymore because of the nuclear winter and mutants and monsters and stuff that has developed due to the radiation on the surface. So humanity basically had to retrieve into the metro tunnels where they 
try to survive and fight off any danger that might come from above. So here in this, the original first Metro book, um, our protagonist is Artyom. He is a young man of about 20 or like in his early 20s. And he was born on the surface, but he has been living in the, in the Metro system since he was a child. He accepts a mission from a guy named Hunter who Artyom meets in the beginning. Hunter is at the station where Artyom lives um, on a kind of mission. We don't really know what Hunter is investigating, but he's investigating something. So anyway, Hunter starts talking to Artyom and eventually he's like, so if I'm not back in two days from my mission, um, can you go to the polis, uh, which is kind of the center of this metro system, can you go to the polis and find a guy named Melnik and give him this bullet casing from me? And he gives Artyom a bullet casing, of course. Um, and yeah, Artyom accepts the mission because he's a young man who has been living at his station for most of his life up until now so he wants to um, prove himself and he wants to experience something and he wants to explore the metro so he accepts hunter's mission and of course a few days later he has to start traveling through the tunnels because hunter hasn't returned from his mission so yeah Artyom has to try to get to the polis, which is a very long way because he lives more or less at the other end of the metro system. And this is the very, 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 very basic plot of this novel. Artyom has to try to get to the polis to deliver the message for Melnik. And of course, uh, on his way, Artyom uh, explores the metro and we explore the metro with him with all its the dangers of very different kinds and I don't want to say much more about the plot or I can't really do that without spoiling much which I don't want to do in case you haven't read the book um, but yeah let's just say we explore the metro together with Artyom and there is a lot going on in the metro um, the book has a lot of action, it is very plot driven and um, at some points it kind of scares the shit out of you. It's also a very male story uh, to say it that way because women pretty much don't play a role there. Um, yeah, just heads up for that but it didn't really make the reading experience any less fun for me, that was just something that I noticed like ah, we don't really have women here but okay so I enjoyed this book a lot it was on my reading list for the longest time because I also want to read it before I start playing the game which I now can do um, and the thing that I really liked about this book apart from the whole plot of course was the that the world building and the concepts um, the whole concept of people going into the metro system because of radiation I thought that was very intriguing and the whole world building was super interesting and very well done I think um, and it kind of gives you a new perspective of on life on the surface where it, which is where we live because um, you have this society where some people cannot even imagine what it's like to not have the walls of tunnels around you and just have sky above you. I thought that was very interesting, very interesting thought. I also liked many of the characters that we meet. Um, I love the pacing of the book, although this has almost 800 pages in the German version. I read it in like nine days maybe. Um, so the pacing is very good. You really want to kind of know what happens next because a lot is going on. And I also liked many of the social, historical and scary things that the book includes. Again, no spoilers. So in short, if you want to read a post-apocalyptic action thriller that sometimes scares the shit out of you, read this.
so yeah that were all the books that i read we'll see what i will come up with for the remaining two months of this year maybe i could give you some ideas of what to read or what not to read although i pretty much liked everything that i read so yeah. but i hope that you found this wrap up interesting and maybe i'll see you in the next one bye